March 2nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Leviticus chapters 26 and 27 from the Old Testament. You must not make for yourselves idols, so you must not set up for yourselves a carved image or a pillar, and you must not place a sculpted stone in your land to bow down before it, for I am the Lord your God. You must keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and are sure to obey my commandments, I will give you your rains in their time, so that the land will give its yield and the trees of the field will produce their fruit. Threshing season will extend for you until the season for harvesting grapes, and the season for harvesting grapes will extend until sowing season. So you will eat your bread until you are satisfied, and you will live securely in your land. I will grant you peace in the land so that you will lie down to sleep without anyone terrifying you. I will remove harmful animals from the land, and no sword of war will pass through your land. You will pursue your enemies, and they will fall before you by the sword. Five of you will pursue a hundred, and a hundred of you will pursue ten thousand, and your enemies will fall before you by the sword. I will turn to you, make you fruitful, multiply you, and maintain my covenant with you. You will still be eating stored produce from the previous year and will have to clean out what is stored from the previous year to make room for new. I will put my tabernacle in your midst and I will not abhor you. I will walk among you and I will be your God and you will be my people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out from the land of Egypt, from being their slaves and I broke the bars of your yoke and caused you to walk upright. If, however, you do not obey me and keep all these commandments, if you reject my statutes and abhor my regulations so that you do not keep all my commandments and you break my covenant, I, for my part, will do this to you. I will inflict horror on you, consumption and fever, which diminish eyesight and drain away the vitality of life. You will sow your seed in vain because your enemies will eat it. I will set my face against you. You will be struck down before your enemies. Those who hate you will rule over you, and you will flee when there is no one pursuing you. If, in spite of all these things, you do not obey me, I will discipline you seven times more on account of your sins. I will break your strong pride and make your sky like iron and your land like bronze. Your strength will be used up in vain. Your land will not give its yield, and the trees of the land will not produce their fruit. If you walk in hostility against me and are not willing to obey me, I will increase your affliction seven times according to your sins. I will send the wild animals against you, and they will bereave you of your children, annihilate your cattle, and diminish your population so that your roads will become deserted. If in spite of these things you do not allow yourselves to be disciplined, and you walk in hostility against me, I myself will also walk in hostility against you and strike you seven times on account of your sins. I will bring on you an avenging sword, a covenant vengeance. Although you will gather together in your cities, I will send pestilence among you and you will be given into enemy hands. When I break off your supply of bread, ten women will bake your bread in one oven. They will ration your bread by weight and you will eat and not be satisfied. If in spite of this you do not obey me, but walk in hostility against me, I will walk in hostile rage against you, and I myself will also discipline you seven times on account of your sins. You will eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters. I will destroy your high places and cut down your incense altars, and I will stack your dead bodies on top of the lifeless bodies of your idols, I will abhor you. I will lay your cities waste and make your sanctuaries desolate, and I will refuse to smell your soothing aromas. I myself will make the land desolate, and your enemies who live in it will be appalled. I will scatter you among the nations and unsheath the sword after you, so your land will become desolate and your cities will become a waste. Then the land will make up for its Sabbath all the days. It lies desolate while you are in the land of your enemies, then the land will rest and make up its Sabbath. All the days of the desolation it will have the rest it did not have on your Sabbath when you lived on it. 
As for the ones who remain among you, I will bring despair into their hearts in the lands of their enemies. The sound of a blowing leaf will pursue them, and they will flee as one who flees a sword and fall down even though there is no pursuer. They will stumble over each other as though who flee before a sword, though there is no pursuer, and there will be no one to take a stand for you before your enemies. You will perish among the nations. The land of your enemies will consume you. As for the ones who remain among you, they will rot away because of their iniquity in the lands of your enemies, and they will also rot away because of their ancestors' iniquities which are with them. However, when they confess their iniquity and their ancestors' iniquity, which they committed by trespassing against me, by which they also walked in hostility against me, and I myself will walk in hostility against them and bring them into the land of their enemies, and then their uncircumcised hearts become humbled and they make up for their iniquity, I will remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham, and I will remember the land. The land will be abandoned by them, in order that it may make up for its Sabbaths while it is made desolate without them. And they will make up for their iniquity, because they have rejected my regulations and have abhorred my statutes. In spite of this, however, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not reject them and abhor them to make a complete end of them, to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God." I will remember for them the covenant with their ancestors whom I brought out from the land of Egypt in the sight of the nations to be their God. I am the Lord. These are the statutes, regulations, and instructions which the Lord established between himself and the Israelites at Mount Sinai through Moses. The Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and tell them, when a man makes a special votive offering based on the conversion value of persons to the Lord, the conversion value of the male from 20 years old up to 60 years old is 50 shekels by the standard of the sanctuary shekel. If the person is female, the conversion value is 30 shekels. If the person is from 5 years old up to 20 years old, the conversion value of the male is 20 shekels and for the female 10 shekels. If the person is one month old up to five years old, the conversion value of the male is five shekels of silver, and for the female the conversion value is three shekels of silver. If the person is from sixty years old and older, if he is a male the conversion value is fifteen shekels, and for the female ten shekels. If he is too poor to pay the conversion value, he must stand the person before the priest, and the priest will establish his conversion value according to what the man who made the vow can afford. The priest will establish his conversion value. If what is vowed is a kind of animal from which an offering may be presented to the Lord, anything from which he gives to the Lord from this kind of animal will be holy. He must not replace or exchange it good for bad or bad for good, and if he does indeed exchange one animal for another animal, then both the original animal and its substitute will be holy. If what is vowed is an unclean animal from which an offering must not be presented to the Lord, then he must stand the animal before the priest. And the priest will establish its conversion value, whether good or bad, according to the assessed conversion value of the priest, thus it will be. If, however, the person who made the vow redeems the animal, he must add one-fifth to its conversion value. If a man consecrates his house as holy to the Lord, the priest will establish its conversion value, whether good or bad. Just as the priest establishes its conversion value, thus it will stand. If the one who consecrates it redeems his house, he must add to it one-fifth of its conversion value in silver, and it will belong to him. If a man consecrates to the Lord some of his own landed property, the conversion value must be calculated in accordance with the amount of seed needed to sow it, a homer of barley seed being priced at 50 shekels of silver. If he consecrates his field in the jubilee year, the conversion value will stand. But if he consecrates his field after the jubilee, 
the priest will calculate the price for him according to the years that are left until the next jubilee year, and it will be deducted from the conversion value. If, however, the one who consecrated the field redeems it, he must add to it one-fifth of the conversion price, and it will belong to him. If he does not redeem the field, but sells the field to someone else, he may never redeem it. When it reverts in the Jubilee, the field will be holy to the Lord like a permanently dedicated field. It will become the priest's property. If he consecrates to the Lord a field he has purchased, which is not part of his own landed property, the priest will calculate for him the amount of its conversion value until the Jubilee year and he must pay the conversion value on that jubilee day as something that is holy to the Lord. In the jubilee year, the field will return to the one from whom he bought it. The one to whom it belongs is landed property. Every conversion value must be calculated by the standard of the sanctuary shekel, 20 gerhars to the shekel. Surely no man may consecrate a firstborn that already belongs to the Lord, as a firstborn among the animals, whether it is an ox or a sheep, it belongs to the Lord. If, however, it is among the unclean animals, he may ransom it according to its conversion value and must add one-fifth to it. But if it is not redeemed, it must be sold according to its conversion value. Surely anything which a man permanently dedicates to the Lord from all that belongs to him, whether from people, animals, or his landed property, must be neither sold nor redeemed. Anything permanently dedicated is most holy to the Lord. Any human being who is permanently dedicated must not be ransomed. Such a person must be put to death. Any tithe of the land, from the grain of the land or from the fruit of the trees, belongs to the Lord. It is holy to the Lord. If a man redeems part of his tithe, however, he must add one-fifth to it. All the tithe of herd or flock, everything which passes under the rod, the tenth one, will be holy to the Lord. The owner must not examine the animals to distinguish between good and bad, and he must not exchange it. If, however, he does exchange it, both the original animal and its substitute will be holy. It must not be redeemed. These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses to tell the Israelites at Mount Sinai. God, I don't think that my patience level is very high today. I keep seeing all this stuff on Facebook and Pinterest and Twitter and all these other social media places about all these hand-picked verses out of the Bible that are separated from the rest of the Bible. And they're all the feel-good things about the Bible. Now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> you are a feel-good God. You are amazing. You are loving. You are kind. Don't get me wrong. Those are awesome, powerful verses. But why in the world do people weigh so heavily on just those verses without paying attention to the totality of who you really are, the totality of what your word tells us. Why aren't there graphics done on Pinterest that, that showcase the Ten Commandments? Why aren't there uh, graphics on, on Pinterest and posted on Facebook that talk about this side of you? That if we are going to not follow your commands, that there will be discipline. Why are we so surprised that you were a God who reigns sovereign and you wouldn't discipline us because of how much you love us? That you wouldn't inflict situations upon us when we don't obey what you've asked us to do? And who are we to even judge what you can and can't do? You were the one who created us. The creator gets to make the rules here. I don't know. I truly think it's just my patience level today is just gone and and trust me I love the kind sweet let the children come to me Jesus part of the Bible I so adore that and there's times in my life where I just sink into those those chapters of the Bible and they bring me so much comfort 
but we just bristle when we read about the justice that you want to bring in this world that you get to choose to bring into this world we actually act surprised and shocked well we want you to judge these people but maybe not so harsh god <laughs> probably because we're afraid that we're next in line for that judgment but I love reading this part where you say, look, if you do this, this is going to happen. And if you do this, this is going to happen. You have very strict guidelines. If this happens, this happens. And you showed them over and over again that this would happen. But then you go on to say, all is not lost. If you will stop holding on to your iniquity, if you would stop holding on to your sin, if you choose to repent and come back, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob, with Isaac, with Abraham. I haven't forgotten you. I just need to discipline you because of how much I love you. And you need to understand that there's consequences to your actions. You know, I love that verse in 2 Timothy in chapter 2. That says if we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Your true character is to love us. Your true character is to want reconciliation with us. Your true character is to forgive us. Your true character, thank goodness, is to be faithful to us even when we aren't faithful. So today, even though I have to apologize and ask forgiveness for my lack of patience <laughs> with the world, I do also take a moment and, and thank you for the blessing of discipline. You know, sometimes we're caught in those times or we call them seasons, <laughs> where we say, God's not listening to me, or it feels like he's so far away, or I keep waiting for an answer, and I'm just going to keep trying to remain faithful until he tells me. And sometimes the answer is, get your act together and quit being a brat, and I'll show you <laughs> the answer. Right now I'm disciplining you, and you deserve it, and you need it. And you have to understand it comes from a place of love. How absolutely amazing, God, that you love us enough to discipline us. That you love us enough to show us that what we are doing is wrong. And how we can come back into covenant with you. And how incredibly awesome that we can hold on to that promise. That you will be faithful because your character never changes. You will always love us. You will never forsake us. You will always be faithful to us. Thank you so much for not just being the kind, loving, generous, forgiving God that we see in the New Testament through your son. Thank you for being this complete, amazing God, multifaceted, that is all things to us. The more I get to know you, the less I understand how little I can do on my own. But to serve a God who is all things, and you have empowered me and allowed me to tap into your attributes and into your strength, and allowed me to follow you, now I know with you, all things are possible. Thank you, God, so much for such an amazing love that you have for us. In your son's name we pray. Amen.